Smoke and Mirrors, episode 48. 48 Laws of Power, rule number one. Don't outshine the masters. <laughs> Show no love. <laughs> <laughs> love <to> get you <laughs> <laughs> Fucking 50. You did How do did the 50. 50 come through and call it the 50 laws of power and still use the old 48 laws of power and just add two? It was just <laughs> two. It was just like the 50th law. I know. <laughs> Dumb shit. I love 50. <laughs> <laughs> that was making money. Fuck yeah. Yeah. How you always going there? Hey, good, good. It's Living. A nice little, little Saturday. It's nice, it's nice and sunny here. Mm-hmm. Mm. It was rainy and cold as fuck yesterday. Yeah, this weather's been a little bit all over the place. It's kind of trash. Yeah, and, uh, ain't nothing that you can actually bet on. Like yesterday, it rained in the morning and it was sunny for the rest of the day. Yeah, well, it's sunny here, not in our area. Oh, really? It was cold as fuck and rainy. Yeah, it was overcast. <laughs> I am going well. This is our yearly episode. Yeah. So one year ago today, yeah. we were in the same room doing the same shit. Yeah. The different setup. Yeah. We didn't sound as good. Shit done changed. Yeah, no. <laughs> the glow up, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. This week we're uh we're gonna break all that shit down. Mm-hmm. A lot of um a lot of news to kind of get through, actually. Big news though. Big news, big yeah. pieces of news. Huge. <laughs> <Big news. laughs> just doing the Trump dance. Uh, the, 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 the O that posted up, he looks like he's jacking off invisible ghosts. <laughs> fucking killed me. And that's all I think about when I see those videos. <laughs> I know. Hey. How, how do you jack off two guys <laughs> at the same time? <laughs> fucking, every time I think of that, I just think of Breakfast Club as well with the hoodie when he's like... <laughs> Shout I'd kill someone if they did that to my fucking hoodie. <laughs> oh, no fucking way. Nice. I'll beat you. I will beat you if you do that to my hoodie. But the fuck thing is, I would beat you in the hoodie. I would cover your face. <laughs> <laughs> Just big hockey goons on it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's when you grab, you grab the hood. You tighten it, <laughs> and then you just go to town. <laughs> just meat sack that out. <laughs> Why is it always fucking wild in those fights where they just rip that whole shirt off? <laughs> it's always funny after the fight when that walks off with like the half shirt peeling off. <laughs> nah, for me, it's when the collar's like all the way down. <laughs> it's really droopy, and it's separated from the actual <laughs> Dude walked into the club with a crew neck, came out with the V neck. Oh, no, it's bad, man. It looked like a yay, a yay t shirt after they was finished scrapping. I always feel a little like weird when you just see the O's nipple hanging. <laughs> Yeah. Oh fuck! It's, it's like the ma- it's like the male wig rip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, getting into our streaming news. Uh, um, Amazon execs talked about the Lord of the Rings show budget, which is like four hundred and fifty six million or something like billion? that. Fucking oh, million, yeah. million. Nah, they overall they were dropping a billion into yeah. this show. Yeah, but it seemed like five hundred and fifty four million of it was that the the rights. Yeah. And 456 mil was the show. Which and, is still too much for me. For oh, the, yeah. 100%. This is one like two season, movies. Man. Yeah. Big time. It's not like this is going to bankroll the full 10 seasons. That's right? two Marvel movies. We were talking about it. The original Lord of the Rings movies were like 180 million. Yeah, for the all three. All three. 60 million a picture. Yeah. And they did a lot. They stretched that budget. Ooh, oh, when yeah. you make your budget back in the first movie, like, hey, we made a billion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, on that 180 million, or essentially 60 million, we got something going here. Fucking badly. That's how they should do it. Well, that's why you saw the the ramp up, right? You saw the ramp up from the, the marketing. The marketing was, was really kind of shitty for um, the fellowship when you think about it. Yeah. Like you had that first trailer like a year out and it just showed one shot of them. It showed them walking through the path and them. then like the the titles coming out every year. Yeah. And then that, w- that was really it until the movie dropped. Yeah. 
And then it was just stills. But then like you death by stills. On the <laughs> flip side of that, you saw the marketing come up for the two towers and it was the biggest thing in the fucking world. Yeah. Mm. And they were able to just get O's like other scores and stuff. We're acquiring that score for this. Thank you. Out of like all those fucking movies, <clears throat> I love that extended edition cover for two towers. That color is fucking mad. That rust maroon sort yeah, of number. Yeah, the maroon fives. <laughs> fucking excellent. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, so what two things that they confirmed mm. was that this will be coming out weekly. So, mm. um, the chick was talking about appointment television, yeah, being a thing. Mm. And the other thing was something that we talked about, which was a lot of people need to watch the show. I don't know what they do if this first season flops, <coughs> which I see it doing. See, I don't, I don't see it flopping because I know Bezos will promote the shit out of this on every like platform you can young bezzy <laughs> young bezzy is probably going to put something up in the sky probably something in space <laughs> just like can you imagine gold he, out the sky well can you imagine if he just painted a giant fucking amazon logo on the moon <laughs> <laughs> fucking <hell. laughs> we're now delivering <laughs> you know what he should do he should get a plane that like just like drags this like paper dragon around everywhere with Lord of the Rings on there. That'd be cool. You know what they need to do? They just need to get one of those Ents and fucking launch it into space and then just have like fucking random stills of it. Like we found this in the fucking, just on the outside of Earth and it's just an Ent. <laughs> Lord of cool. the Rings coming soon. <laughs> um, so Numi Rapace and Nicholas Pinnock are joining uh, Matthias Gunartz in... Um, in Django, the TV show. Yeah. 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 So this is set up over there where? At FX? Um, is, I thought it was a Lionsgate show. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Well, if it is Lionsgate, then it is FX. Hopefully it's violent. I really like this Matthias though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's this good. cool. He was yeah. good in The Old Guard as well. But yeah. So this is um, the remake of Antonio Carbucci's Django. Or reimagining, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is cool. Is this before or after Operation fin Finale? This, th this would be before. Before <laughs> that. Because it was first the Spaghetti Western and then the Spaghetti What's-His-Face. James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we do it. It's fucking wild, man. What do you call it? So we have Travis Knight, the guy who did Bumblebee. He's going to direct a film called Uprising. Yeah. Mm. So this one is based off a book by Raymond Villarreal. Um Fuck, this one sounds interesting, though. It's like uh, they find this woman and then she disappears from the fucking morgue. Yeah. Mm. And they start finding more people and they start disappearing too. Yeah. But then you find out there's like this strain of fucking vampirism that goes around. Yeah. Fine. And fucking there's this CIA agent that's trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. Mm. It sounds fucking cool, man. What do you call them? They start building like they start colonizing, building their own communities, things yeah. like that. Fucking interesting, man. And they're called gloamings in this. Yeah. yeah. When I read it, I was like glowies from Gears 3. <laughs> the Lambin. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. And then they start, um, what's his facing? Like creating communities and then there's terrorist organizations against the gloamings. Yeah. And then there's like, um, it gets to a point where a gloaming actually runs for mayor. Yeah. And then they say all hell breaks loose. Of course, oh, when it hits God. politics. So... When all was, hell breaks loose. When I was going through this, it was giving me some like devouring vibes, that book about the bats and all that shit, but it was also like almost like a precursor to fucking Daybreakers. Yeah, or um, True Blood. Yeah. When va vampires are just out there. Yeah. They're outed. <laughs> I really ousted. wish they, they'd do a, a prequel for Daybreakers. Mm. Mm. That'd be a nice, nice little sequel, actually. Yeah. A prequel, yeah. sorry. Because yeah. you, you could just follow Defoe's character around as well. Well, I, I would want to follow What's-His-Face's character, to be honest. Sam Neill. Yeah, very true. Yeah, because they're, they're actually in a society where vampires are born. Yeah. And not turned. Not turned, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it becomes a way of life rather than uh, What's-His-Face. And at what point in civilization was it where vampires took over? Yeah. 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 Be cool. Um, so we have reports coming out that possibly the biggest movie of the year mm -hmm. There's nothing else unless Top Gun can top it. Yeah. Um, it probably could. 
I think just in, in sheer spectacle and and also anticipation, Dune is winning. Yeah. Because um, mm. there's a lot of Dune fans out there. You know yeah. what I mean? A lot of Top Gun, Gun fans out there as well, but mm. I've seen more outcry for Dune getting pushed back than mm. I ever did for Top Gun. Yeah, it's true. Mm. But yeah, so the, the new report is that because of this whole merger with Discovery and uh, WB, or Warner Media, I should say, not WB, um, yeah. Dune is definitely getting a cinema release first. Yeah. So we don't know if it's going to follow the um, the 45-day rollout, which... 30. A 30-day rollout. Yeah. That's right, because Warner's 30. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know if it's going to follow that one, but yeah, it probably will. To be honest, I, yeah. I see them rolling out, come out to the cinemas, see it, thirty days, and then HBO Max, mm. or at least digital, and then HBO Max. So even even with like the, um, like, I forget. I think it was like Hollywood Reporter reporting on this deadline, this, deadline, deadline reporting. Yeah. Um, Warner's still sticking to the yeah, which was we're doing the the simultaneous kind of release because you got no say now. Nah, like you're done. Yeah. All of you over there are done. <clears throat> yeah, it's just holding position until you're given a new set of orders and instructions. Yeah. Oh, the lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm excited for that. Either way, I was going to go watch Dune in the cinemas. So oh, yeah. Fuck, fuck yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's what I wanted to see this year. I think that's the place to watch it. If I only saw one movie this year and it was Dune, I, I, I would have been happy. Yeah. You know so, what I mean? Admittedly, I saw Tenet, which... It's the only other movie I saw at the movies this year. Well, I'm not going to see nobody and then not see Dune at the movies. Yeah, that's true. Didn't we see something else? No, we didn't. Tenet was the last movie we saw at the movies. Damn. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. A tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Wire team are developing We Own This City, mm. um, starring John Bernthal. Yeah. Um, and a few others in there as well. Yeah. So what this is about is about the Gun Trace Task Force, um, which was out there in New York. Yeah. New York? No, it's, um, uh, what's his face? It's still in Boston. In Boston. Yeah. Um, and they were responsible for getting, getting guns back. Guns off the street, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they operated under their own law. Yeah, it was the Wild West. And they like just basically took control of the city, of yeah. the streets. So they'd, they'd go out, they'd, they'd rob fucking drug dealers, they'd rob regular people, they'd, you know, yeah, it was crazy. All to fund their operation. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, wild, man. But yeah, this should be really good. I'm, I'm really excited to see What's-His-Face back on TV, to be honest. Bernthal. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Marlo from The Wire is going to be in here as well. Oh, shit. Which is cool. Yeah, it's nice to see him back in Boston, even though he's like a New York boy. Hmm. He's from the Bronx. He acts all day. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So in celebration of uh, Asian American Pacific Islander Month, Mm. um, Netflix are also developing animated Asian feature films. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have stories with um, Stephen Chow. I think Boom Studios are jumping in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Stephen Char was doing uh The Monkey King. The Monkey King, yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is like a story of the uh, the it's a it's a sort of retelling of Journey to the West with the actual yeah. monkeys, which yeah. is kinda cool. Yeah. This will be mad. It's kinda funny that he's doing this since he did Journey he to the did, West. Yeah, he did yeah. Journey to the West, yeah. Which was fucking fire. Was it? Yeah. I've I never fucking loved that movie. Yeah, I haven't watched them. It's it's good. I liked it. Mm. <clears throat> um, and then we had Boons and Curses as mm-hmm. well, which is a comedy horror. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Mech Cadets, which is from Boom Studios. Yeah. Mm. But it's a, it's a it was a, a anime before? I think so. Yeah. 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 It's an anime book before, I think. Yeah. This will get the big budget sort of yeah. CG animated. Hopefully. You got Robotech over there. So if you might, is it Robotech? Yeah. Robotech or, or Gundam? I thought it was Robotech. Uh, and that's the one that Jordan... Jordan Voigt, Robbins. Jordan Voigt's doing, yeah. Yeah. But that Boons and Curses looks cool though, man. Mm. Like the three foot tall hero made of butter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> so random. Let's just turn the heat off on that bitch. Know, right? <laughs> Stay away from the sun. <laughs> so that I went to popcorn. Oh, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> My only week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So we got um, Rebecca Ferguson to lead the new Apple Plus series. <laughs> Wall. <laughs> I thought you were just going to straight say Rebecca Ferguson to nail some wall. <laughs> I was thinking about it, but fuck it out. I just couldn't do it. That is wild. That is I'm wild. Hard keeping a straight face right now. I didn't read the synopsis on this one. Uh, this is a sci-fi story. A sci-fi story set up at Apple Plus. Yeah. Um, so it's um set in this future that's that's basically dystopian right but they live very much like the matrix uh, like thousands of meters underground yeah mm. close to um, the core and it's she warm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so she plays this engineer who basically works for the city um but then finds out that all these rules and and laws that kind of govern the men and women of the city um uh are falling down yeah and and there's someone that's destroying the city on the low. Dun, dun. On the low, oh. low. <laughs> um, so we got Amazon. So Amazon, like this is, is quite big, but Amazon is renewing Wheel of Time. So Wheel of Time is currently <laughs> finishing off shooting their first season. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's got, um, what's her name? Rosamund Pike, yep. I think, is in there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so they automatically, from the jump, they were just like, hey, take $200 million, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's left over from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, and go shoot your second season. So this is this is pretty big because it, it, it just shows, like, you know, that they're really – um, they're really happy with what they're seeing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. I mean, it's a big it, vote of confidence. It's it's a vote of confidence from the, the studio, which is good. Um, what was this one about? Though? So Rosamond Pike's character, this is a fantasy again, yeah. a fantasy. Yeah. So yeah. based on Robert Jordan's um, Wheel of Time series. Yeah. So she, um, Rosamond Pike, is the head of like this coven or something like that. Yes. Or part of this coven. And in this existence, only women can use magic. Yes. And then she she has to go on this journey and she's got like her fellowship with her. Mm -hmm. um, but then finds that one of the fellowship could be the prophesied one that could either end all of existence mm. or make it better or save it. Right. right. So yeah. this is the Matrix of the Rings. Yeah. I take that deal, but like it's Amazon. If they're investing five hundred million into a Lord of the Rings series, you, mm. you know this one's gonna look at least look good. I don't know. Their streaming service needs to do something about the look of their fucking films. They and they, TV. Mm, it just it doesn't stream properly. I'm just trying to think if there's anything that actually stands out. No, as like a good looking no. See, my biggest issue was um, HDR for me. Mm. Like when I was watching Uncle Frank, when that HDR was just too uh, too dark almost. Right. Yeah. I... It's just <clears throat> that it, it doesn't look right. So it doesn't look rich. It's mm. like they're, they're mm. not, it's like they're shooting on 1080p cameras and they're upscaling. They're upscaling, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of terrible. Whereas a Netflix shoots exclusively on Ari cameras mm. and they they made sure they bought as many Ari cameras as they could get from Ari wow in 4k so they shoot directly in 4k so even though it's compressed video and everything mm. if they were to be released on blu-ray be next level mm. Mm. Cool. that's it for our streaming news that's it. so now we have our set our uh, fan the hammer segment coming mm -hmm. up that's right. So, so can uh, you please fan the hammer? Pause. <laughs> these these are just the details because there are no other details. Gunshot. All right. Gunshot. 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 <laughs> uh, all right. So Idris Elba said the Luther movie is targeting a September start date. And while, like, you know, we might get that, what we are getting is Hocus Pocus 2, which is set to debut on Disney Plus in 2022. Also skipping a theatrical um, debut is Lindsay Beer's directorial debut with Pet Cemetery 2, the sequel no one asked for. Leslie Odom Jr., who was fire in One Night in Miami, is also taking Kate Hudson on a journey through Knives Out 2. Jeffrey Donovan, Kristen Chenoweth, and Little Hell, 
little hell, little Rel Howry are joining national champions. Clarice, the show no one asked for because we wanted the Hannibal continuation, Correct. is moving to Paramount Plus for its second season. Mm -hmm. Jenny Ortega is playing Wednesday Adams in Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, HBO Max with ads. The extra HBO Max, the free version, is dropping in early June. Bruce McGill, who banged... Uh, Joe Hollenbeck's wife in... <laughs> oh, shit, he did too. In fucking Last Boy Scout. Head of gut. Maria Sten and Hugh Thompson are joining Amazon's Jack Reacher series. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Irvine is being cast as Alan Scott, and for some reason all the tabloids want to say he's the gay lantern. Yeah, even who, though he's just a person. Who gives a fuck, really? Uh, so Bad Boys for Life Helm is a deal... Pause. L. Arby and Bilal Farah are going to helm Batgirl, um, doing what Joss Whedon couldn't and bringing some diversity to the matter. John Boyega and Joe Cornish are returning to famous roles in Attack the Block in its sequel. And again, with Pacific Islander Month, Jason Momoa confirms that there is a July start date for Aquaman 2, and he co-wrote and developed the story and was actually like, um, encouraged to do so from the director. Shout out to all those people. Mm -hmm. And that is fanning the hammer. <clears throat> Very good there. Thanks. Very good there, VD. I can dig it. Mm. So now we got our film news. Film noirs. Yeah. So the the quite my least favorite <laughs> piece of news for the week, honestly. I I sent it through and I I, I told the boys that it's it's basically just it's, it's the washed versus washed. <laughs> it's, a battle, it's a battle of the bold over here. All right, so, so John Travolta and Bruce Willis are finally reteaming after Pulp Fiction. This is the reteam that we wanted, right? Yeah, of course. Because <laughs> I really wanted to see that washed cock <clears throat> Willis go up against washed drug dealer fucking <laughs> Travolta. So they're teaming up for this movie called Paradise City. Where well, the girls are pretty. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like they just wanted a holiday because what? <laughs> Literally. Like it's shot Literally. in Maui. Um, and it's like Travolta versus Willis. Um, and he's working his, like, I think it's Travolta working his way through the, um, or it's Willis working his way through the fucking Hawaiian, like, <clears throat> crime underground. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing yeah. I ever heard of. I'm pretty sure they were both like, we should both get a tan in Hawaii during COVID. Yeah. It's like, how can we, how can we get a studio funded holiday this year? We know what we're going to do. Like, I just see them down there on the beach together and like Travolta's like oiling Willis's head with baby oil. And then like reporters came over and they just made something up. <laughs> uh, it's like Miami Vice or with bounty hunters instead of cops. Mm. Yeah. Very good. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Natalie Emmanuel from Fast and Furious and Game of Thrones, mm. where she got her kid off, um, and Garrett yes, Headland sir. are going to star in The Bride. So this is like a Dracula yep. The Bride story. Yep. So no details on who Garrett Headland's playing, but Natalie Emmanuel is the one who's going to get swept off her feet um, mm. before she realizes that there is a gothic conspiracy at foot. Ooh. I wish <laughs> Garrett Hedlund would do more stuff, eh? Same. I like Garrett Hedlund. Same. He's fire. Like, I don't know why we're getting fucking Jared Leto in in Tron. Because Jared Leto keeps getting his roles. <laughs> badly. Garrett Hedlund would have made a good Joker as well. He's got the face for it. The pause. Face for it. Yeah. Pause. All right, so uh, WB. WB's in their... In their, in their in their remake bag, yeah. Um, so they they're setting up to um, to remake The Hunger, right? So The Hunger was um, a Tony Scott film back in the day. Yeah, um, starred uh, David Bowie and Susan Sarandon. Mm. So this is kind of weird, man, because it, it it sort of plays like a straight movie, but it's not, right? So this is um, they they're two vampires. Uh, David Bowie has a partner, and they're both vampires. Yeah, and um, mm -hmm. out of nowhere. He starts aging rapidly. Yeah. Right. And he, he can't figure out what it is. Um, he goes to this doctor, Susan Sarandon, and um, explains everything that's going on. And, you yeah. know, she views it like she, she's found the, the cradle of life. 
You know what I mean? She can she can actually she can fucking live forever after this. And in this, it starts this this love triangle between yeah. all three of them, right? So. I'm surprised I've never heard of this movie, but after like reading the story, I was like, "Fuck, yeah, I really actually want to watch really this." Really cool, yeah. Um, early Tony Scott as well, exactly. But it's weird because it's like the first horror movie I think I've seen Tony Scott direct. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> Ridley don't do horror either. Aliens is it's not a horror; that's a sci-fi film. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited for it, man. Yeah, man, I'm I'm excited if they if they can. Um, well, this is going to be more based on. Because this is a book before, I think. Yeah. And this is going to be more more geared towards the book than it was a remake of the, the actual that the, the Scott movie. Yeah. Who did they? I mean, they they took things from the book, but it's not heavily <clears throat> sort of inspired by the book. So, mm. and so did you watch the trailer? No, no, I didn't. I saw it on the on the story, and I was like, Nah, I don't need to watch the trailer. I read the synopsis; it's enough for me. Yeah. The, these nineteen eighty six trailers are fucking hilarious. <laughs> so he's, it like it goes through and it like goes through the cast members, and it's like, and Susan Sarandon, the sexy, like Susan Sarandon, and then it's like David Bowie, stoic and dark. Yeah, um, I'm excited for this next piece of news because this was actually one of my favorite movies it's that one came of the, out. One of the best movies that year was it last two years ago? Two years ago, yeah, mm. 2019. Um, so Alexander Ayo wants to make a crawl too. Mm. Um, he said it's not going to be a continuation of the first crawl. Thank God. It's going to be something similar where it's in the storm. Yeah, in the same place, maybe, but not. Like with the same characters, because yeah. that'd just be too crazy. Yeah. Um, so his team are developing ideas now mm. um, before he eventually takes it to fuck. Who made this? I want to say Fox, but I don't think it is. It's not. It's not Lionsgate. One of those. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, I enjoyed the first Crawl, man. Oh man, uh, it was it's so 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 entertaining. This movie. Yeah. Like the first movie is so entertaining and so tense as well. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it really works as well because it's like an eighty minute movie. Yeah, it's not like overly like blown out at ninety minutes or hour forty or something like that. It's lean and mean at at the same time. You know what I mean? Like they weren't inside the house for three, maybe four hours. Yeah, they were literally in that house for eighty minutes. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. And that's how this shit sort of really happens in the in real life, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's not like Jaws where they like a shark can attack for like, you know, 30, 40 minutes. Like a shark attack is done in like thirty, not even thirty seconds. Five yeah. seconds is done yeah. and then we out. Yeah. But yeah, this is interesting. When when we saw this, we were talking about it. So we AA, you can use any of this if you want. <laughs> but we we think it should still be set on that same day. That same storm, but just from a, a different point of view. Yeah. Right? Because I mean they they set up the fact that it's it's infested with um with alligators, this place that they're at. Yeah. Right? So it's it's it wouldn't just be the area that they're in, it'd be everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And Florida would get even worse after that levee breaks. Yeah. Remember yeah. at right at the end? Yeah. And it'd probably push all those gators further inland as well. Um so it'd be good to kind of see it. Out in the open, yeah, sort of, yeah, not not um, so contained to a house, but contained to the house means more money. I'd I'd almost like to see it like a car stranded or something like that. Yeah. That's how it starts. And Fucking then, fuck. highway, yeah, highway. Fuck, that'd be rough. Cujo highway with gators. Be, highway would be mad because you could go from car to car then. Yeah, yeah. fuck. Yeah. And then the service station there as well, and, yeah. and like a boat or something. Yeah, mate. I want my writer's credit. Cut the check. <laughs> Producer's credit. <laughs> <laughs> just see before the water hits, Kevin Costin is just there. <laughs> see you later, champion. Fuck, I hate that. He could have sped over there and brought him back in time before anybody knew what the I fuck know. happened. Or even just like... Just run him, him away. Halfway. Just run him away. <laughs> <laughs> just disappear. Yeah, no way. <laughs> Just say he survived the tornado. And just like he, he got blown away to the next state there. Yeah. You know what would have been fucked is if he did like woof woof 
And Kevin Costner just dead from the whiplash. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> just a bag of bones after it. <laughs> Does that big fucking scream again? <laughs> yeah, so this next article made me fucking hungry. But um, there's a there's a film coming out about Richard Mon- Montanez. Is it Montanez? I think Montanez. so, yeah. yeah. Is that, if that's how you pronounce it. Apologies, we're butchering it. Um, who claims to be the creator of Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Fast. Now, one of the screenwriters for the film uh, was, I guess, trying to defend, you know, the, the claims for Montanez in regards to this because... Um, there's reports coming out now saying that it wasn't Richard Montanez. It was a group of people who created the Flamin' Heart. Crack yeah. shot yeah. team. <laughs> and Frito Lay. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is the film that's done by Eva Longoria. Yeah. yeah. It's her her directorial debut. debut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, um, I kind of feel like Frito's kind of going from the like the viewpoint of because it's not documented, it's not real. Yeah. Because we didn't officially have you on there. But this guy, like, he was able to recreate the flavor mm-hmm. using kitchen spices in his home. Yeah. Mm. There's a um, a past um, uh, CEO or, or, or past exec that can actually confirm that he brought the idea to him. Yeah. But then Frito's saying, actually, we had someone commissioned in like another state working on that already. Yeah. Mm. So it doesn't work. I don't know where it actually ends up. And I'd like to get the truth. Because yeah. this guy's been talking about it in books, in interviews, everything yeah. for years that he's fucking created this. So. I mean, have you created for, uh, like the Flaming, Flaming Hot Cheetos? I'd tell people. Fucking Fuck oath. oath. But if I didn't, right? Yeah. Why would I die with this lie? I know. Like, I wouldn't go out there and then someone's like, you risked it all for Flaming Hot Cheetos? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah. I don't know, man. Imagine just saying that to the person who is making that line. He's just there. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we got um, Dwayne The Rock Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're laughing because, like, that... <laughs> picture of Dwayne the Cock Johnson always gets me. <laughs> Pause. All right, so so the rock I'm just gonna say is um he's he's been scheduled to um to voice crypto. So if you know crypto is the name of uh, Superman's dog. Yeah. All right. So this is for this animated film called DC's like uh, League of Super Pets. All right. So I obviously the League all have pets. Apparently. Apparently. What's Allegedly. Green Lantern's pet, though? I don't know. Kilowog? <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> but, yeah, so, so this is supposedly set. Um, so Superman actually goes on vacation, which is wild to me. Um, and, you know, shit goes down and the, the pets have to, have to handle it. it. It obviously sounds like they went on a group fucking... Justice League vacation because uh, where's Batman? Where's where's Wonder Woman? Where's the Lanterns? Like that's their first mistake. Yeah, Batman never goes on vacation. But no, he doesn't. He's too uh, too committed. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we'll see how this one goes. Yeah, could be good. Like kid fair. Yeah, yeah. I reckon it would be. I'd honestly see it. Like like Brody would probably not want to watch it unless. Mm, yeah. There is something that's like, wow, this is really mad in there. Yeah. This is like a big monster or something, or they do like the shuffle or something related to Fortnite. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, Last piece of film news there. So uh, there can be only one Highlander, and apparently Henry Cavill is the man for the job. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I'm excited because, like, the biggest thing there is Chad Slahulski's helm, like, He's at the helm of this shit. Yeah. He's developing it. And the fact that if Chad's there, 8711 is going to be there. Mm, yeah. And my guys with swords can, I mean, we've seen what they can do, what they did on John Week 3. Mm. Yeah. That shit will be fire. Um, I would actually like to see Cavill play the Kurgan. That'd be cool. Or the villain. Be the bad guy? Yeah. Yeah. 
deserves another bad guy role. Yeah, he plays the bad guy well, yeah. I think. Yeah. Like even your little snippets of like Justice League where he was bad yeah. in the Whedon cut. Um, <laughs> or <won't> let me die. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sound and, like Skeletor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and also Mission Impossible Fallout. Oh, yeah. For me, that's what mm. it is. John Locke, like, it's just next level. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it would be, be good if he does and someone else comes in and he's the, the hero. Like, someone if, Scottish, by the way. Yeah. Richard Madden. Richard yeah. Madden would be good. There's but your the, Highlander right there, yeah. motherfuckers. Who's your He's Ramirez? Because be Ramirez is Spanish, yeah? No. Yeah. He's supposed to be Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Do you just get that guy from... He's supposed uh, to be a Spaniard that actually... is why his name is Ramirez. That was obviously a conquistador or something. Did you just get fucking somehow, Antonio Banderas? Somehow mm. got... Yeah, Banderas would be good. Somehow got over to Japan and fell in love there and... Got the sword and then the wife died and then he just walked earth like Cain. Fucking hell, gave the sword and then got the sword. <laughs> Badly. But yeah, Banderas would be good. But or, admittedly or admittedly a little bit. Or Ed, well, Ed, I'd, I'd prefer Edgar Ramirez because mm. he's a bit younger. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It just doesn't make sense for him to age so quickly. Mm. Yeah. Because he wouldn't have, I mean, he would have found out he was a Highlander at the same time, the same age. They should all literally be the same age. Mm, yeah. Like that 35, 40 mark. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of drama to be had as well because the start of Highlander is almost like him losing everything. Mm. Yeah. Like everyone dying in that war, his wife, his kids, and he's like lost everything. So he's at this point where... No, 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 no. He gets ostracized. He gets ostracized because he's a high, because he can't die. Yeah. Remember he's going through the street like that? Yeah. And he's just getting destroyed by all those people. Uh, and that's how he loses yeah. his wife and his like everything. Loses his clan. It's mm. the worst thing you can do. Mm. Yeah. Shows how like much I've watched Highlander <laughs> in the last 10, 15 years. Man, I watched the those first two with the big dog. She was fire. It was the first time watching that director's cut too for yeah, the shit second. is unreal, man. Hmm. I gotta watch that second one again. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, man, I'm excited for this. Cavill as a Kurgan would be good though. Mm, yeah. Be cool if he is physically bigger than the than the lead. Because if he is physically bigger than the lead, then than the lead, then yeah, Richard Madden would do. But honestly, I think Madden's gonna get busy now, either either doing Bond or if he doesn't do Bond, you can do this. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Because I I would trust, like, I'd believe that. Cavill would be the British invader, you know what I mean, against the Scottish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, what I mean? yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, as well. Hmm. That's it. That's it for film news. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into our trailers there. All right. So we finally um, another possible Bond. We finally got to see uh, Henry Golding hmm. in, in the Snake Eyes trailer. Yep. It was only fifty nine <laughs> seconds long though. That's weird. It was kind of wild for your first official trailer. Yeah. So that was trailer. It wasn't teaser. It was trailer. Yeah, it's true. But showed enough for me. Yeah, I kind of don't I'm, need to see anymore. I'm kind of excited for this movie. It actually looks good. It's, it's shaping up quite quite good there. Be yeah. nice if it was R-rated. Obviously not. Nah. Not this one. Yeah. But the visuals look nice. Visuals look nice. Fighting looks good. Yeah. Um, action looks good as well. Mm. Looks like they shot the action properly. I'm hoping that 8711's on this. Yeah. But it's big action. Big. It's G.I. Joe action, really. A lot of it looked like, um, not a lot of it, but one of that that chase sequence with the cars yeah. reminded me of Black Panther. Yes. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. When he kind of takes that one car out behind him mm. and then it flips and stuff and they just drive away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it showed... It actually showed a lot for a 59-second trailer. It showed, it showed like, him getting into the training mm. and what comes next. It's, it's and set up, yeah. So the story is supposedly he um, saves Storm Shadow and Storm Shadow yeah. asks him to come and join. Shit. Yeah. Oh. See, I, I like this angle mm. because it actually builds them up as brothers yeah. from the start. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to them just opposing each other from the start. As opposed to one of them being like, you know, an outcast and then the other one just being a dick. Yeah. Because you automatically mm -hmm. root for the, the outcast. outcast. Yeah. Yeah. This is true. Do you ever find that shit funny in G.I. Joe 2? 
when you just see the master and he's just slumped with the sword in his back and Storm Shadow's like, <laughs> runs away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we've got the first trailer for The Ice Road with Liam Neeson, yeah. Lawrence Fishburne. This is the Netflix, uh, Netflix bought this, yeah? Yeah. 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 Uh, no killer whales in sight in Not this trailer, yet. though. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Um, but Neeson's the only one for the job. He's ran the ice road for years. Yeah. Um, he's like the hardened driver that uh, it's going to get them... Get the the drill pieces or the piping paws uh, across the ice road. Yeah, yeah. And then like, he's got to assemble it. Top notch team, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks all right, but I wish it was just them against the ice road. I don't know why they're adding like, oh, there's a fucking like you know team of mercenaries out there. That's they got ready thirty to hours to breathe. Yeah, mate. We've seen this already. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need that now. We got a we got a real story coming out from Ron Howard soon. We don't yeah. need this one. I feel like it's cashing in on that. Oh, you know it is. Yeah. They're trying to set that up. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, some shit. <laughs> Uh, then we got a trailer for Dear Evan Hansen uh, about a uh, a mentally ill high school kid that looks thirty. I'm saying it right now. The guy that plays this kid is like he looks like he's 30. Couldn't pull off the Marchio. Huh? Nah. 28 years old, look like a 15 year old. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, genetics just like took off after Marchio. <laughs> <laughs> Marchio just got a different. <laughs> um, but yeah, he he writes letters to himself. That's why it's called Dear Evan Hansen to help with his mental illness. Um and he really wants to connect with people but can't. And then this kid connects with him called Connor. He writes on his cast because his arm's broken. Mm. Um, and then Lovers? Is that what he <laughs> no, he, he actually just writes Connor. <laughs> uh, he writes Connor on there. And then the next day, like, the kid kills himself. Connor kills himself. Wow. Um, but, but before that, he takes one of his letters that he's written to himself. Mm. Um, and then the parents come in, they say, oh, you knew Connor, he wrote this letter to you, but it's really one of the kids' letters. And then there's, then there's like this big remembrance being planned and then he gets roped in. And all the things that he wanted to do in that letter with connecting people and so on and so forth happens because of the death of this kid. But then he can't bring himself to say that I didn't know him. It was just because he wrote it on my cast and took one of my own letters. Cow. And, yeah, they basically show you the whole movie in the trailer. So if you're listening to this, do not watch the trailer for Dear Evan Hansen. Um, I felt a little weird, like, with them sort of showcasing uh, a kid with, with mental illness as the hero only because, like, you just get a lot of, like, that sort of feeling in high school. Mm. Know what I mean? Like where it's just like, oh, I've got mental illness. I've got mental illness. And we all got mental illness. Yeah. Um, Must be mentally ill together. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Where it's become like this bonfire sing song it's a dance. It's trope. Yeah. Well, at least it feels like a trope. It does. Yeah. yeah. When everyone's got it, it kind of feels like, well, yeah. okay. Something's definitely in the water. Mm. We've got a, um, finally, uh, an official trailer for Respect. Yeah. Um, this this one also shows you the whole fucking movie. Yeah, which was wild. So this is the um, the biopic for Aretha Franklin, mm. Mm. Um, played by Jennifer Hudson. I was really excited to see what's his face in there, uh, Marlon. Marlon doing his thing. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, Marlon Wayans, man. Marlon Wayans at serious fair. Yeah, fire. You yeah. can't beat it. Nah, you cannot beat it. It's unbelievable. Um, but yeah, this looks good. Mm. Uh, kind of, kind of had like a rocket band vibe with her discovering the song and the piano yeah. and sort of scatting and whatnot. But that for for me that that's just next level on Rocket Man. Yeah, because what's his face wrote it and he, he's literally just putting that music to it. Yeah, beautiful. Um, it scared me that it's PG thirteen, so it's not gonna go into all the shit. Um, even though that, like in the trailer, you see the aspects of domestic violence and yeah. control, and 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 sort of her really sort of stepping out of that and becoming mm. like herself. Um, but seeing Marlon Wayans in there, I was like, he mm. does kind of look like Richard Pryor. It does. 
Um, would have killed it. We all saw that yeah. fucking the the what's his face the audition tape. Like it was yeah, it's next level, man. Yep. Harlan. But I like it did give me goosebumps. Yeah. These music biopics like very easily like they'll they'll play a couple of tracks and I'll just be like yeah. <laughs> Don't then I'm into Thanos. Thanos. Yeah. <laughs> Rain fire. We've <laughs> 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 well, um, got that Fear Street trilogy. Huh? Yeah. Tell me about this. I didn't watch this one. Me neither. I watched it. <laughs> so, uh, Netflix are doing something that's actually pretty cool. So, so it's R.L. Stein. Yeah. R.L. Stein. It's R-rated. Oh shit! Yeah, they put an R into RL this time. <laughs> <laughs> they put the restricted <laughs> into real life. Um, so they're doing like an event, which I think is pretty cool. So this trilogy will play out in the month. So July 9th. So July, I think the first week of July, mm. the second week of July, the first one comes out. The next week, the second one comes out, and then like it'll finish off and cap the wow. trilogy in the next week. Um, so it's kind of like, and it's a feature, they're feature movies. Oh, so they're like 90 minutes each? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, That's pretty cool. All connected, showing like the um, the sort of, this curse that they think is on the town. Yeah. And then it goes back in time. So it'll start in, I think, uh, 2003 or something, then go back to 84, then go back to 1666 wow. and the first settlers of that community and like what actually happened mm. brings it back. That's pretty cool, actually. I'm excited it's a nice, for it, nice man. Nice little premise there yeah. for it. Yeah. Remember when we were younger and then we'd get like these sort of kids horror events that would come on. Yeah. Um, and it Mr. actually looked. Like, yeah. Yeah. And we'd like get really excited and like, ooh, we're a bit scared and whatnot. Yeah. But those wouldn't sleep in their bed and piss in their pants because yeah. they wouldn't want to go down the, <laughs> the hallway to the toilet and stuff. It was dark as fuck always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm excited for that, even though this isn't made for kids. No, but this is, but I like this. I like this premise. Hey, let's yeah. take like some sort of kid story and we'll turn it on its fucking head and make it yeah. R rated. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. The last trailer that I we mean, got was that. Uh, no sudden move, man. I showed you fuck all. But I like that. Yeah. I like that it showed you nothing. So no sudden move is um Soderbergh, Stephen Soderbergh's new um new film. Fu- yeah, new film. New film. Yeah. Um set over there at um HBO Max. Mm. Um and this is that's that story that we 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 were talking about nearly a year ago now. Um yeah. Yeah. So this is the one where they um it's this crew that gets um they got to go do this job but then they find out that the the job wasn't really a job. Yeah. And um they need to find out who actually like something goes bad on the job mm. and they need to find out who actually hired them for the job. Who set them up? Yeah. It's uh the Mr. Kobayashi that that sort of yeah, it's finding Mr. Kobayashi will then lead them to fucking Kaiser Soze. Yeah. Mr. Soze. This um this cast looks unbelievable. Don Cheadle, man. Benicio, Benny. John Hamm. Next level, man. I'm just excited to see Benny. Yeah. After watching all those Sicarios in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. like, I just, I'm dying for a new Sicario, to be honest. Um, a friend at work was actually like, oh, we watched Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. <laughs> 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 and then he was like, one of Benicio's lines is, uh, as your legal counsel, I advise you to take all the drugs and alcohol. <laughs> 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 they uh, steal that case. <laughs> <laughs> there's no evidence. There's no evidence. If, if they can't find any evidence, <laughs> if you use it all, there's no evidence. <laughs> Uh, I'm excited for it, man. I love and it. That's all the movie trailers for this week. Yeah. Uh, kicking off entertainment news, uh, we've got to um, say goodbye to two legends in the game. Yeah. So we had two comedic legends, actually. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So we had Charles Grodin, um, mm. who passed away at age 86 from bone marrow cancer. Yeah. Um, he was in such fair as Heartbreak Kid. Um, he uh beethoven beethoven i always remember him as the uncle in clifford clifford mm. fuck 
Um, Charles Grodin's delivery sometimes, like when he's not happy, but he has to give like a nice line, was yeah. unmatched. Um, him, him in Midnight Run is fucking the best. Is he? He's the best. He's the best that there is, man. Yeah. Make, I think he runs through nearly this whole breakfast menu <laughs> at this place. <laughs> And just settles on I'll, I'll have chorizo and eggs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and De Niro being De Niro is just having coffee, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we have Paul Mooney pass away. God damn, seventy nine mm. from a heart attack. Uh, this I, is comedic royalty. Royalty, yeah. here, man. Paul like, Mooney Paul did Mooney? not give a fuck. He I love said it. what was ever on his mind, and still to this day, yeah, like Mooney was still like that. Yeah. So he got his name. His grandmother actually gave him because Mooney's not his last name. No, no. Um, he got his last name from Scarface, the original Scarface. Mm. That guy's name, his last name was Mooney, mm. Mm. and that's what his grandmother called him, Mooney. So that's why he used it. That's awesome. Um, Paul Mooney actually started off as a fucking circus master, as a ringleader in a circus. Wow. He did that. But at the time, like he's writing jokes, he's writing comedy and stuff mm. like that. Richard Pryor notices him, puts him on. Yeah. Write my Saturday Night Live stuff. Yeah. Mm. Um, Write my show stuff. My Sunset uh, Strip. No, 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 no. He did. He did. Paul Mooney himself said that he wrote for Richard, but it was never, ever any of his stand up. He's credited as co writing some of Sunset Strip and his, and his stand up stuff. Um, he was also the inspiration for Homie the Clown. Yes. Yeah. He did. Homie so the Clown was fucking hilarious. I watched that episode the other day on YouTube. <laughs> Fuck, I laughed, man. Because they hire him for a fucking children's party. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um, and he, like, that was in, like, the first, like, 20, 30 years of his career. Yeah. Before he even came back. And did Chappelle's show. Amazing. And, and he was like real as fuck in Chappelle's show playing himself and Negro Dharmas. Yeah. <laughs> What's Sky <the> Jones <laughs> read the news and then take her wig off and read the weather. <laughs> Ali Sadiq tells a story about Paul Mooney and he um, like Paul Mooney would just do like random stuff, right? So Ali's out there touring with um with paul mooney and paul would just walk into the room and just be like uh ali go count how many people there is in the crowd <laughs> and he's like, that, that's not me that's not my job like i'm not supposed to do that. i'm not fucking doing that. <laughs> they get into this fucking fight right and like you know he calls up his manager and he's like i'm a fuck paul mooney up <laughs> and he's like don't don't put hands on Paul Mooney, and he he he, he doesn't obviously, and he just, <laughs> he has like a really really good set this one day, and Paul was one of those people that never ever apologized, right? So Paul like randomly, like he just saw him walking past the room back and forth outside of his dressing room, and then he just dips in and he's just good set out there, and then that was it. Never said sorry. Nothing. <laughs> that was his way of apologizing to Ali. I love it, man. It's and that the was, best thing in the world. That was probably a lot for Paul Mooney it to is. actually do that. Because this is the man that that just like, you know, just tore down Eddie in front of bloody <laughs> uh, what's his name? John the man who killed all With those. With a spoon? No. Uh the the white director who directed thriller. Landis. John Landis. So, so Eddie tells the story of him because you know how in the comedy store back in the day they used to have the light saying, hey, you need to get off in the next two minutes or whatever it is. So he, he saw the light and he was like, well, I don't want to fucking get off now. <laughs> and he just kept going for like 30 minutes. Fuck. <laughs> and then like what's-his-face comes over, John Witherspoon and Paul Mooney came over <laughs> and just started swearing at him and everything. And he's like, you know, fuck you, I'm not doing that and all that. And they're like, you know, with if the uh, if the light goes on, you know, you're supposed to get the fuck off the stage <laughs> and all this shit. And what's his face? Paul Mooney was like, yeah. And 
you've got this joke that uh, that you say. Don't say that joke anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he had to get re- Richard called both of them up and said, you need to respect Eddie because he's the, he's the next one. Yeah. He's the only one that could have killed that beef between all of us. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best. Um, still and- raw, man. Still raw to this day. Paul yeah. Mooney was still touring to this day. He'd go out into the club. He'd do whatever he wanted to do. Yeah. And he still kept it the same. I and love it. it. And the, it, the man who who basically told Joey Diaz he was funny. Fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would yeah. have been big. You you saw all of all of the tweets come out um this week. And and Joey Joey was one of the first ones out. And Fuck. he was like, you know, he he is the person that, that sort of told him that he was funny and made him laugh. Like Joe Rogan Rogan tells a story about how he was on stage, first up and coming guy. And like he's telling jokes and nobody's laughing, but then in the back of the crowd, you just hear Paul ha ha ha, ha <laughs> laughing, and he was like, "You're actually funny," and that was enough for them. Fuck, because I mean, Paul came up, he, he came up with Richard, man. That the only other thing that would be better than that would be Richard Pryor telling you, "Hey, you are funny." Yeah, yeah, mm. fuck yeah, amazing. And as controversial as Paul Mooney was, he actually put a lot of O's on. He's the man. He like actually gave people their starts yeah he would he would pick an up and comer to come on the road with paul Mooney. can you imagine that fucking hell can you hey. imagine the opportunity to <sighs> go with paul mooney to learn the craft you'd do it for free yeah you know you would yeah. do it for free fuck it <laughs> i'm gonna go out the next three months with paul mooney that's that's what i'm doing yeah amazing <sighs> Rest in peace to these two legends, Charles mm. Grodin and Paul Mooney. Uh, our condolences to your family, friends, and fans. Uh, rest in peace. Rest in power. And uh, thank you for everything that you've done for the industry. The art is just unmatched. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. Yeah. And now we need to follow that with the <laughs> some Snyder news. <laughs> so Zach Snyder was talking about um, <clears throat> how he was being treated at Warner. Right, mm-hmm. so uh, this is when he was going to finish off Justice League. So originally they wanted Snyder. They nobody had seen it at all. Originally they were like, "Hey, can you um, can can you just release it as is? You know, work print, just release it." And Snyder was like, "Stop. Three things. Right, it's not finished. Um, if you release it now, you're just going to get more backlash." And if I release it now in this state, you have the right to turn around and say, see, it's not as good as you thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, you, you, we're not doing this. <laughs> right. So supposedly they, they don't really like him over there. No. At Warner anymore. Even though he, he's essentially built HBO Max for them over there. It's true. <laughs> you think about it. Um, yeah, so that, that's what he was going through. Supposedly it's still still a little bit strained over there. They don't like him any that much over there now. Yeah. It's funny because he'd ask for things and they would make it as difficult as possible yeah. for him to get that thing. I want to put Green Lantern in my movie. Mm. No, you can't. Why? Do you have plans for him? Do you have plans for the the John Smith character? No. John Stewart. John Stewart's character? No. But we might, so you can't use him. Which is dumb because I mean they they already they already set up that it wasn't part of their DCEU so so there's no it's not going to stop anything mm. dumb shit. Um, he also spoke about um, his idea for the the third three hundred movie right so mm. he wrote the second mm. three hundred movie Rise of an Empire. Um, the third one was going to be um, Alexander the Great. Yeah. Right, so Alexander the Great also fought against Xerxes. Mm. Um, I, do, I don't know if it was Xerxes or his son, one of the two, or if yeah. it was Xerxes. Yeah, but yeah, he he, um, you know, basically united the Greece again and fought against Xerxes. Mm. Um, but as Zach was writing it, like he 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 focused more on the, on the love story between um, Alexander and um, Hephaestion. Yeah. Right, so like it, it just turned more more that way than than anything else. So the the Oliver Stone version sort of alludes to it, but never shows it. Yeah. Um, the books by I've got the books at home by that by that I don't know Connie Gilden. I don't no. know. 
No, no, no. It's not Connor Gilden. Some other guy. Manfredo. Manfredo, yeah. I've got the books at home. He he leans heavily into that. Yeah. Yeah. Which There's makes books. sense because that's part of Greek culture. <clears throat> that's right, man. Like old Greek culture. You know what I mean? They're, they're basically soldiers. Even the Spartans did that. That's right. That's why, like, Spartan women, like, on their wedding night, they had they almost cut their hair like boys. Yeah. Um, and then they had to hide it. Yeah. But, yeah, which, honestly, I don't mind seeing. Like, that. That's it would have been cool to see that. It would have been better than the, the incest story that they tried to fucking put out there with the Oliver Stone's version. Have you seen the three-and-a-half-hour cut of that Fuck, movie? no, I haven't even seen any <laughs> cuts of this fucking movie. <laughs> As soon as I realized it wasn't going to be like the books, I was like, nah, I ain't watching that. <laughs> Lion of Macedon. Yeah. It's a really good story. It's an unbelievable story. Yeah. I've got to catch up on my Alexander, actually. Yeah. I might actually watch the Colin Farrell one sometime. It's, <laughs> it's on a stream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on the back burner there. <clears throat> So we had a couple of acquisitions during the week as well. Yeah, it is an acquisition. So we had uh, Warner Media being acquired by mm. Discovery. Mm. Um, so Discovery, a much smaller company, went to AT and T with their bid. Mm. AT and T agreed. Um, AT and T wants no part of Warner Media anymore because <laughs> it's all the Snyder Cut guys, man. They tag them in everything. <laughs> everything is, don't you think? AT and at AT and T. Like <laughs> seriously, man. I reckon they're like shell shocked, eh? Yeah, man. <laughs> well, what they said is they want the payout from Discovery to then launch their five G coverage yep. more, or, or focus more on their five G coverage and to make make that stronger, invest in there. Because um, Warner's not actually making them any money. Apparently, mm. over the three years that AT and T had Warner, they ran it into the ground, mm. um, and because of all like the political shakeups and stuff, they just they don't want no part of the movie business anymore. Yeah, uh, Discovery, the head of Discovery, is going to take over as CEO of Warner Media, and there is no name for the merged um, uh, company. Mm. At the moment, but they're going to come up with something. But he is a like a very focused John Wick type motherfucker. He is. Too. He is. Um, That's be, what I've heard. Because he like he will go. I need you to do this. And when have you done it? Yeah. When are you going to do this? Like I need an update now. Mm. Next week I want an update. Then the month after that I want an update on how the progress is going and when we're going to get this out. He's like a very, very focused individual. When you think about what he's doing, like Discovery does big things. And we're talking about like, you know, documentaries on nature and mm. all that sort of stuff. If you let someone just do whatever they want in that sort of setting, you'll never get your documentary. You'll never get anything. You'll also get more political bullshit. So this That's treatment right. of Snyder, I think, was more the political side of Warner Media. Mm than the actual focused on making a quality product. Yeah. Um, I think under this guy's leadership, we're actually going to get product coming out that's worthwhile. Because yeah. what this guy does, he doesn't... I don't, I don't even fucking know his name. Um, but he looks like a stone cold I saw a picture too. of him, though, and yeah. he was just like... At the camera. <laughs> any any CEO that wears the fucking the zip up vest yeah. is wild to me. Yeah. Like that oh like I expect him to be wearing like combat boots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um but he like when Discovery has an issue with a show and it's not performing well, he doesn't just cancel the show. Mm. He repackages it and finds out how what can we add to actually make this like more I don't know, edible. Palatable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and enticing for the audience. Yeah. So, like, I'm I'm actually excited because I want to I want to see what the shakeup like sort of entails, mm. what it means for Warner Media in the next five years. Mm. Um, because that Dune piece could be like heavily associated with this. Yeah. And it's now we're trying to make the filmmakers happy. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite a big deal as well, man. Yeah. Like we're talking about $43 billion in cash that's going to AT&T. 
yeah. but that's just the cash portion of it. So yeah. they they also took on a whole lot of Warner's debt too. Yeah, which is wild. Mm. Yeah, that's big, man. Yeah, yeah. Which is why, like we we were talking about it before. Like, I mean, if, if someone like a Netflix would have done this deal, which I'm pretty sure it sounds like, you know, AT and T was shopping, so they could have been. Yeah, could have been there. Been a big deal. Is this that a uh, David Zaslav guy? Is that the guy you're talking I about? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also because of this, there's been like a shake up with the execs. Mm. Mm. So that Jason Cly- Kyler? Kyler, Jason yeah, Killer. Killer. He's going. Mm. Um, mm. I don't think Walter Hamada's too far behind either. Uh, Hamada's probably going to go. Sardoff is probably going to go. Fucking. All of them are gonna probably gonna yeah. fuck a go. The um, treatment of the the properties that they it it's just wasn't right. Mm. Yeah, I'm just glad that they got Flash into production before like all the shit went yeah. down. Because there, might, there might have been all those Fox cancellations that we seen when Disney yeah, merged with Fox, which was kind of trash. We got um at least we we got our Batman as well. Yeah. Um, but you can sort of see from there it was. From the Disney Fox merger, it was at least three to four years before we even seen those properties come back out. Yeah. So now we're only seeing Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One to watch, and mm. we will be right here giving yeah. you the deets. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have um, so with the announcement of the AT and T and Discovery merger. It actually slowed down the talks in regards to MGM and Amazon having their merger as well. Mm. Mm. Now, there's always been talks about this occurring with MGM looking to sell for over fucking $10 billion. <laughs> <laughs> I pay the money. For MGM, I pay the money. Oh, man. When you got a fucking video library that's over 4,000 films, mm. fucking hell. And some of the best properties that you could have as well. Fucking why not? 15 Academy Awards now, man. Whew. Nearly 10 best pictures there. Damn. That's wild, man. Amazing. That is wild. But um, so like I mentioned before, so Amazon, according to multiple fucking media outlets, is looking to acquire MGM for $9 billion fucking dollars. And this is crazy. So Mike Hopkins from Amazon, I think he's the VP yep. for mm. media outlets and things like that, um, is talking to Kevin Ulrich from MGM. And uh, he's spearheading the operation to get this shit done. So it sounds fucking crazy to me. If yeah. MGM folds under Amazon, that's that'll bolster that streaming service right oh, up. Man. Like, um, fuck. Even though MGM don't hold the rights to Bond, because Eon holds the rights, yep. right. there's still a lot that they can sort of show on their streaming service. Because they they got the Rocky and Creed yeah. deals as well. There's a lot there. We've seen, um, what was that ugly fucking, the lion that, that played at the start of a trailer. Fuck. That was disgusting, that line. I think it was respect. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that line and I was disappointed straight away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, it made I, me feel away. Yeah. I said it like two, three months ago, but the only time they should change that fucking line is if fucking uh, Tom is the line. Remember back in the Tom and Jerry show how he came up sometimes? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the only time. You don't change that fucking line, though. <laughs> that line has been dead for fucking Years. Who the fuck cares that, like, you know, a dead lion's roaring? Is that what it was about? It's probably animal cruelty, some bullshit. Get the fuck out of here. Peter was probably on <laughs> someone's back. Get the fuck up. Have right up their meat. ass. <laughs> so Amazon was actually waiting for um for MGM to just, like, wear, just wear them down. Yeah. Because they were like, we're not paying $10 billion, thank you. <laughs> just like how about nine <laughs> yeah, but i'm excited for this as well um because this isn't uh so much a like we'll change amazon mm. this is just it'll add movies hey, we'll add we'll yeah. add something mm. or their release slate will now go to amazon yeah. mgm has some fire back catalog yeah that like some old movies and stuff like that. Yeah. That's what I like about MGM. Yeah. The, all those Turner classic movies are all from MGM. And there's some on HBO as well because they yeah. got the Turner classic. But yeah, yeah, MGM got the mad back catalog. And the United Artists yeah. under MGM, 
Yeah. Why? Big stuff. There. Some of them old thrillers and mm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the longest time, like I thought if MGM was ever going to go to a streaming company, I thought it would have been with Paramount Plus when they announced their shit. Paramount and them was always at, at like at each other's necks. <laughs> no way. <laughs> they, they always try one up each other. It was wild. <laughs> That's why I thought they would have had, like, you know, the piece, the beef. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm excited for that. I, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping I'm, – it, it's weird, though, because we got all those reports that Universal is taking over for, for Bond anyway. So Yeah. Mm. yeah. And Warner's was also Warner was, circling yeah. Eon as well. Yeah. So we'll they see. Universal takes care of international rights anyway, right? For Warner. For Yeah. So, yeah, they get a piece of that pie. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's all, all the, the news for the news. week. Yep. All right. We all watched Army of the Dead. What's your thoughts? I fucking love this movie. Mm. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. The cast was really, really good. The action was good. The story was pretty good. Yeah. I liked it. It yeah. was nice. I really enjoyed this nice fucking movie. Brainless yeah. fair. I didn't have to think about anything. It was nice to watch. It was nice to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see Snyder actually was DOP? Yeah. For the yeah. movie. Um, what I liked about like the movie was um, like how he focused on things yeah. and kept things out of focus. He mm. did that a lot during that end sequence where they were like, they had to like weave their way through. Yeah. So it was sort of like drawing your eye here, but you didn't really focus on the zombies yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 I I didn't enjoy it as much. I appreciated the movie for for what it was. I guess like for me, um, I wanted something a bit more tense, but this was a more like a more action heavy sort of movie. Mm -hmm. um, I knew that from the trailer though. From the trailers, I knew I wasn't gonna get an intense movie. I knew I was gonna be a romp. <laughs> <laughs> but you know when it's like the action movie that's like real tense and I was just like on the edge of their seat? That's more of what I wanted. You watched The Raid me. this week. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, like, I I enjoyed the shit out of this movie. For me, like, it was the, the perfect amount of like, you know, the glow stick scene was awesome for me. And then the action going through that was mad too with that chick taking out the zombies. Mm. But that was cool, actually. Yeah. But there was, it was... It was it was a good mix for me. Mm. Like I knew from the posters, from the trailers that I wasn't going to get like a tense movie. Mm. I just knew that it was going to be like, there'll be a moment or two, but it's just going to be a fuck around basically. Mm. I knew it wasn't going to be Dawn. Yeah. Like this is essentially Zack Snyder's zombie fucking suicide squad movie. Mm. When you think mm. about it, I'm not going to sit here and shit on it. No, nah, no at all. Because like, there's nothing bad that I can say about it. It just didn't give me the feeling. Um, but what I'm sort of open to is this movie getting better with time. Yeah. Uh, because weirdly I, I threw on sucker punch yesterday, right? Wow. The first hour of that movie and I was in, wow. I was enjoying it. I know. I told I you. Cannot, I cannot <laughs> watch the first hour of that movie. But like the deception. I watched the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like yeah, it was it was just weird. That's why I'm, like I'm I'm open to it. Maybe there's something that I'm sort of I'm missing. Mm. I would have loved to have seen this on the big screen, <clears throat> man. Um, because I did watch it, baby in tow. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean. I wasn't holding baby. Jules was, but like we we're all kind of watching it, and it was soft, and you know what I mean. It just it might not have oh. been yeah. I might not have been the right environment to watch it. I watched that shit at 16 decibels. Last night. <laughs> Fucking reference. Ear splitting level. It was so good. Yeah. It sounded really nice. Yeah. Even though it's uncompressed, even though it's compressed Netflix audio, just kind of trash. Oh, well. I did hear surrounds and stuff like that, but it yeah. wasn't to the level where I was like, fuck, this is like immersive. Yeah. But yeah, I think you just need to watch it again, to be honest. I can't keep re-watching these movies. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, I think you need to watch it with, like, us as well. Just have some... Yeah, actually. Have the boys around, you know? I had Weave there. Weave was around. Yeah. But, like, as well as, like, watch it real loud. Oh, the loudness, yeah. 
Because that sort of gets me with movies. Like yesterday, I was trying, I was finding it hard to watch Spider Man when it was like it was two a.m. Obviously, so I couldn't <laughs> like pump that shit as loud as I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to admit, Spider Man Two. I could hear that shit clear as day in my room, son. Oh, yeah. And it was <laughs> fucking excellent. I was watching it at reference. <laughs> Do you know how good that is? Was like it? you can you 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 can you see him shoot the web and you can hear it like, you know, echo up up or down or like wherever. It's like full on directional. It's Jesus. fucking unreal, man. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Atmos, man. Gets you every time. <laughs> yeah. Should have changed your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I what this week I watched a whole lot of movies actually. Yeah. Um I finished off Tenet um mm. on the day that we potted. Um I watched all three of the the Raimi Spider-Man movies. It was really good watching them again. Mm. Like really really good. I don't think I've watched these in like 10 years. Yeah. 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 Pretty I think well. I watched the DVD or Blu-ray was probably the last time. Yeah. But I only watched them once. It's wild. Um watched Sicario 2. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, um, Days of Future Past, The Road Cut, which nice. is really good watching it again. Um, Shazam. Hmm. And I watched... Uh, Shazam was actually quite good yesterday. And uh, I watched uh, The Amazing Spider-Man yesterday. Nice. Which was okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is this still better than the second one, you reckon? I don't know, man. The second one kind of fired at me. I like the I like Electra. of the second one. I like Electra. So, yeah. I like the suit in Amazing 2. Yeah. yeah suit that suit is fucking is trash fucking in this thing. first one. Is it? It's like he cut open basketballs. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it is. It's fucking ugly. I'm telling you, man, like they need to take it back to them Keaton roots with Batman suit and just have the Jordan 6s on your feet. <laughs> fucking for <laughs> real. <laughs> fucking crime That's fighting is want. temporary, my G. Drip is forever. <laughs> <laughs> um... I watched the first three episodes of Invincible, mm. which was fucking mm. excellent. So good. Um, I forgot to mention, I also watched the first two episodes of season two of fucking Megalobox. Oh. Fucking so good, this show, man. What is Megalobox? So Megalobox is this anime with this guy. and um, So this is when boxing has just become old and trivial. So they've tried to spice it up by having dudes in something akin to like those advanced warfare fucking mech suits yeah, where shit. it's just like the the fucking arms yeah. yeah and they call them gears and they go in and they just fucking box like that and there's this guy who um it's a head protection no holy shit yeah man so they have everything like up to the spine and then you fucking get hit and you're just like <laughs> <laughs> but um the dude that you follow is called joe and yeah he's just average joe fucking he goes in with a gear and then it fucking breaks on him. And so his gimmick is that he's no gear Joe. So he just goes in as a normal boxer and fights these guys that have hmm. the suits on. And the first season was fucking mad. It was just like fight after fight after fight and just him going through and fucking all these dudes up. And then the second season is him coming back and he's like fucking, he's addicted to these painkillers, everything. And he's still trying to make money or fucking boxing. Shit, that actually sounds like a drama. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And it's fucking mad, too. No gear, Joe, but he was on the jab. jab. <laughs> <laughs> he was fucking geared up, mate. <laughs> but yeah, that was it. Fucking mad, that show. Though. That's sick. Where, do you, where are you watching that on? So I'm watching it on Anime Lab. Okay, right. Yeah. But, like, if you guys want to watch, like, anime <clears throat> and you don't want to get into that fucking the bullshit of, like, the kawaii shit, like I normally watch, watch that because that's more of a serious anime. It's something more akin to Ninja Scroll than Attack on Titan, if you want to put it like that. Okay. Nice. So I watched um, Midsummer. Ooh, it was the old Midsummer. Yeah. How was it as a as as a follow up to uh, Hereditary? Uh, Hereditary is still the better movie for me. Right. Um, I feel like Hereditary is like the new Exorcist. Mm. Ooh. It's scary as fuck that movie. Yeah. Uh, Midsummer is like. Just the journey, and it's it's very much like Hereditary, where Ari Aster shows the impact of trauma mm. um, and loss, and the main character is just kind of broken and and sort of makes these decisions, clinging onto family or or friends, and then gets drawn into some shit. Um, and that's what this shows. The unsettling thing about Midsummer. Besides how fucking long it is, because it's two and a half hours, and that's Jeez. not that's not the director's cut. 
um, is that they go to the happiest place on earth. Disneyland. <laughs> the second happiest place on earth. <laughs> uh, a Swedish um, village. That's a traditional Swedish village. Mm-hmm. Flowers. The whole movie's basked in sunlight. Beautiful. Wow. So there's no like horror vibes. You're not getting like the traditional horror imagery. Mm-hmm. And then the shit that they do is unreal. Yeah. There's there's some things that they show in here that was just like really fucked up. Um like one one of the one of the rituals is the um the elders of like this this clan, I'll call them, jump off this huge rock face. And they just hit this rock, willingly do it. And you see it, you see everything. And this one guy jumps off and he fucking like, he doesn't die. So they come over with this fucking mallet and these three people just like take a swing each and just crush his face in. And it's just, it's it's just shown so like matter of factly. Nonchalant as a motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) And it's just this feeling of dread with what's going to come next because you can't pick it. Mm. That's what mm. I was saying with the jump squares. Yeah. You can't see it coming. Mm. Um, and then shit just happens, goes down. Fuck. It's wild. It's worth a watch. Mm. Um, Florence Pugh kills it in here as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she was like really good. Again, another shot like hereditary of her just crying yeah you know in hereditary where she loses her daughter and you just see her crying like yeah. that which is probably the most realistic reaction i've seen in a movie about loss yeah shout out to tony collette yeah yeah kills Aussie it. royalty yeah <laughs> real Aussie royalty. <laughs> <laughs> um i watched headshot what do you think um I, I preferred the night comes for us yep but I I still like this. Um, still the same camera movements, graphic as fuck. Yeah, like it's violent and shit. Um, but the raid still edges these out. Pause for me. Yeah, this is the eco Y one when he yeah, yeah, he yeah wakes yeah. up. Yeah. But the good thing about these movies is that they create like this army that the protagonist has to fight against, mm. which I think you need in like a martial arts movie. Of course, like. The big dogs that you got to take out. Got to have yeah. Bolo. Everyone yeah. has to yeah. have Bolo. Yeah. You need where, the boss fight now. Boss yeah. fight, yeah. But where it falls down is that this Timo Giganto likes to make his movies long. Mm. And it's a bit too long for a martial arts movie. Mm. A martial arts movie should be 84 minutes. <laughs> exactly 84. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I finished off Love, Death and Robots season two. That was them hits. This is really good. Um, there's a bit of everything. It's not just your like techno punk gas mm. fucking engine shit that's going on. Cyberpunk. There, there is that, um, and the cyberpunk stuff. But there's a lot of dystopian stuff. There's a lot of um, contemporary set um, ones as well. Well, mm. there is one that Tim Miller directs. It's mm. just this giant that washes up dead on this beach, and then people's reaction to it. <laughs> And yeah, yeah, you get to see a massive giant penis <laughs> with foreskin in tow as well. <laughs> um, but that one isn't played like a thriller or action or anything like that. Um, it's more the somber tone that I really liked. And there's one where Michael B. Jordan shows up. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they, they do it intentionally, but you get live action Michael B. Jordan and CG Michael B. Jordan. Of course you're going to get live action Michael B. Jordan. And then they try, like, make you guess which is which. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't it wasn't bad. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. Nice. And that's all the movies this week. Yeah. But since it's our first year, I think we should go into, like, you know, our thoughts on that first year. Mm. How it all started. Mm-hmm. How did it all start, B? It started because with a, we were we were talking about this for ages. Well, that's that's exactly where it started. It started yeah. with a conversation. Yeah. Um, where there was originally supposed to be four brothers. Yeah. In the mix. Um, but one didn't want to. Mm. Um, and we were all keen on it for a while. 
very, very long time, yeah. And, and then it started very much like Nas did with one mic. That's right. <laughs> and um, and Jules got it for me for a Christmas present because mm. she knew that I was keen on it. Yeah. Um, and then that grew to two mics and, and we eventually like started just turning our um, theatre room into a studio. Yeah. Started with a like small round table. Um, our early podcast that me and Jules did called RJB First Steps, which like was almost like the test and is no longer going today. Mm. Um, sort of laid the groundwork for, for what we have. Mm. Um, cause then once we got that third mic, it was on. Yeah. And we, we kind of like, we just kind of got everything together. Yeah, we just pieced it, pieced it together. Pushed yeah. everything that we could. What's your news? What's your thoughts? Yeah. Everything. No format, nothing. It was just talk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was all over the shop. Yeah. The first, <laughs> it was. But, yeah. <laughs> Those first couple of months was <laughs> was wild, actually. It was a wild fucking west route, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. You're figuring out what we can say, what we shouldn't say. Like, yeah. I know. Um, and now kind of looking into what do we want to say? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was no like sort of purpose or anything like that. We no. just wanted to talk cool shit, report on movie news. Yeah. And like there was a lot of things that came later. Yeah. Like episode, mm. I think it was like episode nine. We finally put like a structure. In. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had the whiteboard and everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, fuck, which was just like an echo. Chamber. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> <clears throat> the camera was behind the the bloody what's his face. The camera was in front of that white board. Yeah. As well. <laughs> so there was a portion of the topics you just couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> we like we I would ha- take pictures of the whiteboard <laughs> and shit, man. Um, our headsets weren't even uniform. No. We had like Triz's old gaming headsets. Yeah. A, a, a pair of headphones that Jules got me <laughs> for Christmas. Um, that was like. There was so much um, figuring out mm. in that first year, yeah. Um, with like audio um, midis and and yeah. what like what's the right program? How do you record it? How do you edit it? Um, I remember you got uh, Adobe, yeah. That sort of um, Adobe Studio is it? Yeah, where yeah. it kind of showed us. All right, we can do this. We can edit it now. Yeah. We can refine the audio. Yeah. We can, we can add video to it. Yeah. Like it was weird. Our first couple didn't have nah. video. Our first, I think, seven or eight. Yeah. And then COVID really hit. Yeah. It just <laughs> fucked our shit up because we, we, we were getting into a groove there and then, hey, we're going to have to Zoom pod now. Yeah. I don't want to fucking Zoom pod. <laughs> and when you listen to those Zoom pods, yeah. fuck, they're bad. <laughs> they are bad. I was like laying down in my bed <laughs> <laughs> doing a podcast. It's wild, son. <laughs> it was crazy. It was, I'm thankful that we only got two. There's, oh, some, yeah. there's some pods that actually, like, that's how they do it. Well, now, yeah, that that's they, they find it easier that way. Because you can get anyone then. Right. Yeah. So if we like, you know, want to, hey, Chris Hemsworth, can you can you fly down to Sydney or, no, 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 I'm gonna stay out here and where is he, Byron? Yeah. Um, we'll just do it over Zoom. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's never happening, by the way. No. Nah. Nah. So that that's that's the other thing that I figured after a year of doing this, I never want a guest on this show. No. Nah. I'm sorry, but to hear like someone else come and break the show down. It it'd be I w- I wouldn't like a guest. I'd like to be able to call someone and ask them question. Uh, ask them a question yeah. regarding like, hey, it, have you heard this? Is it true? No, yeah. it's not true, mate. We're not doing that. <laughs> yeah, right, sweet. You heard it. <laughs> Tell him Porky's champion. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's it's just been this really I think interesting journey. Yeah. Where I think this is the longest we've all optionally committed to something. Yeah. Like optionally. That we're not getting any money from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is like straight for the love. Yeah. Pause. Yeah. Like Ray J. Yeah. <laughs> like, for me, this was like really fucking good. Like I'm not as well versed 
in like the topics and shit like that. But I learned so much from this. And it was also the excitement of the fact that there was a point where we weren't seeing you for such a long period of time, like Dave and I. Yeah. That being able to see you every week. Yeah. And still that shit is fucking exciting, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. That shit's true. We had a chat with the Uber guy and we were like, you know, come down here every week, you know, got to stick to family. Fucking shit's exciting, man. Mm. It's good. Just that aspect of it. And then learning about this shit and all that. Mm. Yeah. So good. But you know, like you speak a fuckload more now than you did in the first episodes. Yeah. A whole lot more. Yeah. You're, you're actually a lot more vocal now. You were rather <laughs> quite, like quite quiet. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like I saw Yoro's chemistry because I know this is your bag as well. And now mm. it's it's my bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's our bag, Jeff. <laughs> I've taken the bag over. But I, I, I just didn't I go like, to Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like I just didn't want to interrupt or anything like that because I felt like I was like, you know, but now I'm getting into it. <laughs> yeah, now, There's now. No, no such thing as interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> now we got the vibes. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think like also what's good is that in this room, like we've got all different types of viewpoints. Yeah. And it, why not? I come out of there just boasting. <laughs> It's excellent. <laughs> it's like if they, they took The Last of Us and they said, oh, okay, well, Joel is now Jolene and Ellie is now Elliot. Elliot. You know, they just switched it up for no fucking reason. But who's making it, though? Some Paul W.S. Anderson. Let's say David. Paul W.S. Anderson's making this movie. Yeah. Or David S. Goyer's directing. Yeah. You would feel the exact same way. But I, But are they making changes that dramatic in this, though? I'd say so. I don't, I don't, I don't think they are. They, they literally posted a video of them with the the creators, and all they're they're showing them is the fucking monsters. Yeah, they're not talking about the story. They're not talking about fucking anything. So I obviously, don't, obviously, the monsters are, are the fucking draw for them. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So this story is secondhand anyway. Then, but don't you think that a blockbuster this size, the story would be light anyways? Yes and no. Like I don't, I don't believe that they they're trying to go for the Oscar with this story. Monster Hunter is the fucking epitome of Steve Irwin's The Crocodile Hunter. Well, sort of. You're you're trying to make a can like a very consistent natural ecosystem by eliminating anything around it that could destroy that ecosystem. That's the whole premise of Monster Hunter. Yeah, but that's like. That could be done in that culture that's actually there in that dimension. You know what I mean? You could still have that. If they if they had that, would you like it? If they had that and they didn't have like trying to church it up with Mia Jovich and like, why'd she have to be in the army? You know what I mean? Why couldn't it just be some average show? <laughs> why, why did <laughs> she they, is the average show? Why, why, she's in the why, did, army. They, why did they have- is misinformation, man? Yeah, but I'll just put out that shit. It's not misinformation. It's her opinion. It is misinformation. No, oh, we know how the virus. We had scientific data on how the fucking virus spreads. For you to go out there and say, "Nah, that's not true. I don't believe that. This is what you should do." She was saying, "I don't believe in wearing a mask." Mm. She wasn't saying you don't need to wear a mask. Yeah, but how do you think that that impacts all of her followers? If she has a million people that then doesn't wear a fucking mask. And then we have, well, their country has a million more fucking coronavirus cases. How do you think that impacts their country? Yeah, fair enough. How do you think that impacts the rest of the community? Mm. But people would have been thinking that already then. If they're using Gina Carano as a reason to not wear a mask, they were thinking that already. You know how easily they are swayed over there. But then you could say that Josh Gad, uh, what's his face? Vincent. From the O from Sons of Anarchy. Crow Magnum looking on. Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman. Yeah. Pedro Pascal. Mm. All of them should have been cancelled or, or up for legal like ramifications because they swayed the election with how much hate they were putting on Trump. Mm. And how Twitter cancelled Trump. I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm not a Biden supporter. I don't give a fuck about the politics over there. I don't but I'm, I'm, like their politics. I'm, what I'm saying is that free speech on the left is okay. Mm. Free speech on the right, not okay. And because of that, Carano gets dumped in the trash. Mm. 
I would argue that. I would argue that the court of public opinion means more than your position, honestly. Well, that's the issue then. Yeah. Yeah, because now we're in cancel culture. Mm. Full swing cancel culture. Yeah, of course. We've we've always had a court of public opinion regardless. See, I, yeah, I know, but now it's weaponized. Do you understand that the iron triangle between Congress, the media, and the public and social media are fucking things up? Mm-hmm. Internet was introduced, yeah. It increased everything in regards to social yeah, activity. What, you're, like the weaponization of these comments. Yeah. Like that's the issue. The media is pushing mm. that. They will not go after anyone on the left. They are targeting people on the right. Okay. I don't agree with what she said, but I don't agree that she she should have been fired either. Yeah. We don't agree on everything. No. Mm. And like, would you be a really shitty pot if we did, to be honest? Yeah. yeah. Well, that pot would only be 20 minutes. I know. I like that. You like it? Yeah. I do. I Thanks. do like it. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> passive aggressive <laughs> I do. <laughs> I am enjoying it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> and we've okay, had no. a couple of those pods too. Big yeah. passive aggressive ones. Yeah, we just had undercover unknown I beef. <laughs> <laughs> it's internal beef. Yeah. <laughs> Look, mate. <laughs> But still, the show goes on, man. That's it. Um, I've had a fucking great ride. Um, and I look forward to year two. Fuck yeah, man. Oh, man. I want some... Uh, I will do this for the rest of my life, man. Fucking us. This, yeah. is, this is what I want to do. This helps me with my job. You know mm. what I mean? Like, this helps True. me. You know what I mean? Like, it's... Mm. I, I, I just... Yeah. I find it helps me with my job. Do you I, find yeah. you can, like... You're, you're more... I guess, open to, to talking and, yeah. and sort of holding the mic pause. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I find. I, I find that I'm more, more vocal now at work and stuff like that because of this, because yeah. I don't, I'm not sort of scared to say something. I can just say whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got cucked. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, Crystal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But we also had some like big old fucking predictions as well. We did in that first year. Um, so I listened to the first ten episodes. Mm. Yeah. Um, so we we actually called like Chris Hemsworth should be Mad Max, right? Yeah. But like it's weird that we associated him with that universe, and he's now gonna be in the next Mad Max iteration. Yeah. Even though it's Furiosa, but he's gonna operate within that world. Yeah. Either way. Still Max. Um, we we also called Paramount Plus's theatrical to streaming window as well. Yeah. Almost like a full maybe six months ahead of what they were gonna do. We could see that the, the writer for that's the for this sort of stuff, guys, we we see it. Yeah. You can see the way that the, the industry is shaping mm. up and you just yeah. I think this is yeah. years and years of just reading news sites. Yeah. Mm. And then now it's just Patton reading the Matrix. It, it, <laughs> literally. Th this comes from me looking at like box office mojo every week to see yeah. all that stuff and how how it sort of shapes up and what they could have done and, you know. Yeah. Or when someone goes in a surprise announcement. Yeah. And then going, but that's why they did this. Yeah. And then, th and then like you start seeing the maths pop up yeah. on the screen. <laughs> yeah. And this informed that. And that's that. That's yeah. what this. Yeah. And, and that's why weird. this actor had this outburst. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the loop and I closed it. <laughs> yeah. Big loop is just shoots himself. <laughs> Blunt up to us. <laughs> but yeah. Shot worse. <laughs> And it, fast. <laughs> I think it's also taking from like like work and like you were mentioning as well. For yeah. me, it's um fucking how things advance as time goes on. Yeah. Like with seeing yeah. this streaming shit, I was thinking automation at work. Mm. Yeah, and you start linking other things. Yeah. 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 Um we while we've been wrong on most of our Marvel <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Fuck like when, it, when it comes to Marvel, we can never fucking predict the Don't future. We know? Nah, 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 nah. I'm the, thinking the, those those uh, fires are still uh, <laughs> still burning. <laughs> the embers. Yeah. No, I'm thinking 2034, dog. They ain't even ready for this. 
Marvel don't even know they're going to do this. Yeah, I'm thinking Phase 16, because I got 16 for it. Um, but we did call that Captain America, who's the Falcon. We'll get his last suit in the, in the final episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Of course. They went the straight Daredevil route. Mm. Um, we were talking about Gladiator 2 last year. We knew Mulan was going to drop on VOD. There was mm-hmm. no other way. And also Black Widow. Yeah. I, I think everyone in the world could see Black Widow was going to drop. Um, what the hell is that Black Widow coming out? July? Uh, July. It's too far away. <laughs> it's like July 12th or something like that. Ugh. But we'll get Loki in between. Yeah, but still, I want that Black Widow song. You know Loki's dropping on like a Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They pushed it. That's wild. Now they, they want to make Wednesdays the new Fridays. I think they've got another show lining up uh, for it, the Friday. Because Mando or Book of Bubble will come out. That's right. So it's, it'll be a Star Wars Friday. Force yeah. Friday. Force Friday, yeah. And then, and then a Marvel Marvel Wednesday. Yeah. A Marvel is Wednesday. The, they can do the M and then the, the W. What Warfare? The, in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also talked like last year, June about netflix invading theaters yeah. and now we're the seeing push. it yeah now we're seeing it in a wider release which like for for netflix makes so much sense yeah like it's just crazy like I, i'd love to see the numbers that they did for army of the dead to be honest last yeah. week uh they pulled in i think it was like eight hundred and seventy thousand, but that's of 250 that's 200, theaters 250 the- yeah 267 Theaters, I think they said. Yeah. yeah. Everything Cinemark would yeah. have been showing Army of the Dead. So if you take that and you times it by 2,600, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Like if they had 3,000 theaters, yeah. what would they do? Yeah. Um, and the biggest piece of speculation that we had hmm. was that streamers will go theatrical and streaming simultaneously. Yeah. Um, so we called that in on June first, right? Three months before HBO Max said heavy into the pandemic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But a full three months before HBO Max even went. You know what? Twenty twenty one. All of our movies yeah. are dropping theatrically. Yeah. Um, I honestly think we don't get enough credit on this show. We probably don't have enough eyes like on us. Yeah. But like I I don't see that slowing down. I think speculation is the best part of the job. Yeah. Yeah. It's what we do. And also I gotta thank you gentlemen mm. for uh coming on the journey with me. Thank you. Another year, another I don't know how many decades yeah. we're gonna go. Grind this out. For our generation, we've got at least how old am I now? I've got at least uh, 60, maybe 70 years in me. Yeah. At yeah. least. At least, because like modern medicine, you know what it's going to do. <laughs> we can do this shit from Mars. That'd be fucking fire too. <laughs> the first podcast on Mars. I'll Zoom you guys from Mars because I know you don't want to leave the atmosphere. I do. You know how bad that lag would be? What do you mean? Why do you think Elon's setting up fucking Starlink right now? Technological advancements. Yeah. <laughs> what if I'm on Bezos's uh, Elysium? Elysium? We should, his Elysium. We should do that actually. That'd be wild. They've, they're, they're setting up a, a what's his face in space currently right now a hotel. Can you imagine the video part on that? That'd be mad. <laughs> Just the Earth spinning in the back. Yeah. Would you, if if it's if it's circumnavigating the Earth. If we do an hour and a half podcast, you realize we'd see like the sun go up and down like 30 or 40 times. <laughs> like, it's fucking wild. So. I was going to say, we should like when we do the, the space hotel pod, we got to have me like facing the stars in the window because of this and yeah. then just fade it in. <laughs> That'd be cool, man. That would be cool. Yeah. All right. Do you always have anything to add there? No. 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 Thank you, hell to of everyone. a run there. Yeah, hell of yeah. a run there, fellas. <laughs> yeah. It's still going. It's still going. It hasn't even hit mid stride. Yeah, or mid stroke. Yeah. <laughs> the gun's <laughs> just gone off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you to everyone who's been here, like from the jump or even joined mm. midway mm. through. 
You guys really, yeah. like, you know, been there for us, giving us mad reviews. It's mm. been fucking excellent. Thank you, fellas, yeah. first and foremost as well. Always a good fucking time. Yeah. Mm. Also got to thank um, Rob from uh, fucking what's his face? Out of the blank mm. as yep. well for, for showing us love and for pursuing Dave so heavily. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but also Katie McShane from the For You Reference podcast, um, who always um, shares our, our episodes and and sort of gives us a little bit of um, commentary as well. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Really do. I think she was almost like the first like real supporter. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you to our family and friends as well, especially Jules, mm. um, who make it like you know possible for us to actually do this Fuck as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, weave on the editing. Um, Jules was editing at yeah. one point. Fuck. Um, yeah. Shout out. And also the child minding, yeah. <laughs> which goes a long way. Yeah, it does actually. <laughs> And also to the homie fucking Dave or Prove, PRV, Invicta, yeah. the homie. Thank you so much for these logos, man. Fuck yeah. Mm. Always a fucking good time. Yeah. Thank you so much for the support and the continuance of your support. And looking forward to more work with you too. Yeah. Possibly on that merch side when we Oprah rich. <laughs> mm. um, love yourself and love movies. Get vaccinated. Yep. And wash your hands. <laughs> Ted not look like the tip of a pink. <laughs> I, I want to see the raisins on it. What a biting lips in the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, see me just sitting there like this the whole time. <laughs> I'm getting into this again. Yeah. Right, we had this conversation. Goddamn. <laughs>